Hi, brothers and sisters. It's really good to see you today. You know, today in my video, well, first of all, hello, I am Melissa. I always kind of forget that part sometimes in the beginning. I'm just jumping right in as if everyone knows me, but hello for those of you who are new to my channel today. I am Melissa and I am a grieving mother. And I am a mother of five children and two of our children, Noah and Sophia, are in heaven. And uh, Noah is seven and Sophia is five. And my last several videos, we've been talking about the emotional impact of grief. And um, I've been sharing my experiences and basically been sharing what I've been learning in my grief. I don't even know if it's learning it, but either way, I'm experiencing it. And um, my last video, we um, talked about bitterness. And this video, I've got my notes with me, as I've explained before, grief brain. That's the term I've given it. And it's the easiest way to actually to explain it to a lot of people, you know. I think it kind of helps make sense as soon as you hear it, grief brain. You know, I've had a few people even like at my work say, what do you mean by that? And, and then I say, well, I'm grieving and I'm in grief. And grief affects your brain. Grief changes the chemistry of your brain and it affects everything about us, everything about us. So today, another emotion that I wanted to talk about is numbness. And um, numbness is definitely, it is definitely something that we experience in grief. And basically, like I wrote down in my journal, uh, at like kind of at the beginning, like I'm not sure I feel anything. And to me, grief is this devastating numbness where every sensation is dulled. Every sensation, even the taste of food and sensation, like food didn't have the same taste for a very long time. And even to this day, it still does it, depending on my day and my emotions. You know, you have zero appetite and like, I'm just here, you know, I just go through the motions. You know, people ask me how I'm doing, and I just shrug my shoulders. Sometimes I really want to say, how should I be doing? I, you know, I don't know if any of you can relate to this. That, you know, I think a lot of people, or maybe even myself, I expected I should know how I feel. And, and, and I'll know, or I'll always be feeling a certain way but that's not true and four years ago noah and sophia were murdered by their oldest brother and in these last four years i have experienced many emotions and numbness is is one of them and um i just felt so numb at times to what malik has done i mean it's murder so i i have just you know, I, I know the first two years for sure, I was very numb, angry and numb, back and forth, like a seesaw, up and down, you know, um, just numb. And even at times today, I can just be very numb to it, you know, and I notice even the members of my family, they're, they're numb, you know, like they're just... I can even tell at times when the other members of my family are in a real numbness period. You know, we, we, I can just see them, they are going through the emotions, just going through the motions of going to school or to work and just trying the, the emotions of the day-to-day -day life here in the, in the United States, you know. Um, my heart is shattered, you know, and it I... Myself, my emotions, it's like my spiritual self, my soul just feels like it is just laying in pieces all over the floor. And it's like Humpty Dumpty, you know, that old children's rhyme, Humpty Dumpty. Uh, it's just like that, that there, I know there is no one and nothing that's going to put me back together the way I was before. That's impossible. It's impossible, you know. Part of me is missing now. 
part of me is missing now. And we, as grievers, it is hard to convey that to others who are not grieving. And especially the loss of a child. It's like the ultimate loss there is in life. Uh, I experience shock, sadness, anger, fear, anxiety, numbness, and thousands of more. Bitterness. You know, my emotions, jealousy, rage. I mean, like, I could just, it'd probably keep on going, you know, discontentment, you know, restlessness, um, lost, you know, confused, you know, these emotions, they just swirl around me and they just hit me. They just kind of just hit me at all different directions and different times of the day too, you know. You know, these emotions, uh, sometimes they come creeping in quietly, but a lot of times they just come pounding right on me, you know, just pounding right on me. Sometimes it doesn't even matter where you are either, you know, it is, it's, it's overwhelming. And after a while, I can just stop feeling. I grow numb. Can any of you relate to that? You know, it's just so many. There are just so many emotions just hitting us and hitting us that after a while, we just come numb to it. We just stop feeling, you know. The numbness, you know, I was thinking about this because I've had um, two surgeries this year. And I've had enough for a lifetime, honestly. But anyways, two this year. And um, I was thinking about the anesthesia that they give me in my surgeries before they put me to sleep, you know, praise God for that. Because, you know, it, the anesthesia, it protects us, you know, from that unbearable pain that surgery brings. Like, we don't want to be awake for those things, you know. And we're protected from the full force of what's happening at the time, right? You know, and that's a good thing. Right? You know, that's a good thing. Well, we don't want to be awake in surgery when they're operating. Like I had stomach surgery and then an elbow surgery, tendonitis. So, you know, yeah. And so I was thinking, well, you know, numbness is a good thing sometimes. But I realized, like anesthesia, numbness is designed to be temporary. And as time goes on, the anesthesia wears off. And then we begin to feel some of the pain of the trauma that took place. And that's what's going on in grief. You know, and as the days and the months and the years go on, the numbness begins to wear off and we are feeling the pain of the trauma that we have experienced. You know, my family experienced an awful, horrific trauma, you know, and numbness and grief, it's also, for me, at times, it was an ideal resting stop. Because, you know, and especially we have two other children still at home, two teenagers. I, I have siblings. We have other people we, we care for and love for and, and want to take care of. And not to mention, eventually we need to eat and clothe ourselves for the weather elements, you know, so then we need to work and, and stuff. So, you know, numbness is a protective shield, basically, against the full emotional, mental, physical, spiritual force of our losses, of my losses. You know, it does. And... I feel, think sometimes even numbness at times allows me to make a video even too, you know, and, or maybe not, or maybe I'm experiencing and feeling the emotions and I do a lot of that in my private time and then it allows me to be able to write it out in a way that I can put words to it to share it because there's, it's, it's, I don't even think my words are really that adequate to describe even what I'm experiencing. 
or even trying to touch on what others might be experiencing. I'm trying, you know, maybe as humans, we just want to try to connect, you know, but the numbness, I've also realized in grief, this numbed out place, it's not meant to be a permanent resident for us. It doesn't make me a good mother, a good wife, a good friend, a good daughter, a sister, you know, none of those things. It cannot sustain our hearts, our relationships, or our purpose in life. This numbed out place. But, <laughs> friends, you know, if the pain is intense enough, you know, and if there are enough complicating factors, like in our situation where there was violence, you know, um, family dynamics, there's criminal circumstances, you know, and not getting to say goodbye either. You know, our hearts slip into this semi-permanent hiding. They just do. They just do. They just do. You know, those awful complicating factors <laughs> surrounding death and grief Yeah, our hearts, they just do. They slip into that permanent hiding place. And our internal feelers, they just shut down. They just shut down. And at least they did for me. You know, and maybe that's also the, how God designed us too and as humans and how things, how our emotions and the emotional impact all works together in grief. That when people, so then we function, you know, people are like, I don't know how you do it. Well, neither do we. But then it's all these things together too. You know. I've also noticed though, even with some of my other, other people in grief and, and I, I noticed this with myself that it can become a way of life. And But it's just so common in grief, <laughs> you know, numbness. It's just common in grief in temporary stages. You know, you see them in temporary stages at the beginning, in the middle, all throughout the whole thing. And as a grieving mother, I will grieve the losses of my children, the rest of my natural earthly life. So, you know, I can imagine there'll be a lot of many temporary stages of numbness in my, in my life, you know. I think this protects our hearts when we need it. I do. And we will come out of it in time. You know, in God's perfect timing, we will come out of our numbness, out of that numbed out place. His love, his grace, this undeserved kindness, this deep love that he has for us, his love will pull us out of that numbed out place. His love will be there with us as we experience our emotions to the deep losses of our children, you know. We just believe God is caring for you. Believe he is caring for you. And believe he's still there even in your numbed out place. He's with me in my numbed out place, you know. And he, he's protecting us, watching over us, caring for us as we are numbed out. You know, he is. And I think about my heart is bruised, brothers and sisters. It is bruised. And so sometimes I feel nothing because it's so bruised. I miss Noah. I miss Sophia. I miss my mom and I miss my dad. I miss those people in my life. And sometimes the miss is so great. The ache is so great. We just go to a numbed out place. Go to a numbed out place. 
The ache is so deep. So deep. So deep. Here's some questions to consider, friends. Have you experienced some emotional numbness since your child died? I don't believe I'm the only one. I don't believe I'm the only one. You know. What has been helpful to you when numb? Is there, is it people? Is it some events, activities? You know, what helps you? Please feel free to leave me a comment, let me know, or email me if you'd like, you know. But I really, really want to encourage you. I want to leave you with this. In our numbed out places and in our numbness, talk to someone you can trust and share your situation with. You know, ask them to maybe check in on you regularly. Or maybe you could even be the initiator and touch base with them. But either way, I found such the beauty in that, you know, and my husband and I, we check in on each other. And I'm able to share with him when I'm feeling numbed out in him with me and we're able to recognize that within one another even too and in our behaviors like we're kind of in this numbed out place and the lord has blessed me with some beautiful friends that i'm able to to share that with also and share my situation with and i can trust them with that and that's my prayer for you today that you will that the lord will place someone in and then most likely it's someone already in your life Maybe we just need to be more open to that. But either way, someone you know, someone that you trust that you can talk to. Don't keep this inside. These things really aren't meant to be left in us for too terribly long. They're really not. But you know what? <laughs> you know what, guys? I go in and out of being numb, like I explained before. But I, I'm, I'm trying to stay there less and less. But heck, really, sincerely, in all honesty, it is okay to be where you are right now. Let's just try not to get stuck there, that's all. That's all. Just like the bitterness, we just need to get it out, you know. And, and the numbness is common and natural and grief and it's okay to be there it is damn sure okay to be there but for the love that we have for our child let's just try not to get stuck there hmm Christmas is upon us brothers and sisters not very far away now not very far away at all one week from today actually Oh, well, God bless you, brothers and sisters, and I will see you on my next video. Be well.